challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. The Golden Ace Hotel in the town of Whitehorse had quieted down for the night except for a few stragglers left in the bar. Suddenly, the sound of a shot was heard from the rooms above. Somebody's shooting. I come from upstairs, didn't it? Well, come on, let's see what it was. Look, going out that back door. That's young Tom and Tom, isn't it? <laughs> Look like him. Come on, we better see what happened upstairs. Wonder why Tom didn't stop. It ain't like him to shoot anybody. There's a door open. Candle burning, too. Jim Bender's room. Look, there on the floor. It's Jim. He's dead. But I tell you, it couldn't have been my brother. Tom ain't in his room. We were sure that it was him running. But Tom would have gone back to his room if he'd done it instead of running away like a That common... would have made more sense. Well, Dan went for Sergeant Preston. Maybe he can clear it up. I could have sworn it was Tom. Looked just like him. Pete, Tom and I have been here for two weeks now, working for you. You should know us well enough to know that we... I know that Tom's a good boy, Marie. And I don't want you to get upset. But Dan and Joe and I saw him. Oh, here's Sergeant Preston now. He'll... Why, that's Tom with him. Hello, boys. Hello, Marie. Hello, Sergeant. What's this I hear about a murder? Jim Bender was killed and robbed last night. We saw Tom here running out. You saw me? Oh, no, you didn't. Joe and Dan was with me. We all could swear it was you. Well, boys, you're wrong about that. Tom spent the night in my cabin. Your cabin? You see, Tom planned to take a trip north with me this morning. Looks as if the trip's off, Tom. That's lucky for me I was with you. Oh, thank heaven, Sergeant. I knew it wasn't Tom. I could have sworn... All right, Pete. In spite of what a Mountie tells you, you still think it was Tom. Now, Marie, I didn't say... I'm leaving. You can get another entertainer for your rotten old hotel. Tom and I are getting out of here. There are plenty of jobs for us in other towns. Now, now, Marie, don't get mad. We just said we thought it was Tom. Come on, Tom, we're packing. Maybe we can find a place where people will think twice before they accuse an innocent man of murder. Oh, but, Marie, I like it here. I don't want to leave. I'm leaving, Tom, and you're coming with me. Well, I'm sorry, Pete. Well, Pete... Looks as if you've lost an entertainer and a helper. Guess maybe we shouldn't have been so hasty. I want to examine Bender's room. This may be the same killer who murdered Rand James. You, you mean that prospector a week ago? Mm-hmm. Ain't no way of telling, is he? I wish this dog of mine could talk. He'd know. How would he know? King got the scent of Rand's murderer. We trailed him, but he got away by boat. The dog will know if the same man was in Bender's room last night. But unfortunately, he can't tell us. Can you, boy? <laughs> It was almost midnight, and the bar in the Polar Hotel in Dawson City echoed with applause as Marie finished us off. Thank you. Thank you. One more encore, Marie. Oh, no more. I'll sing for you again later, boy. Uh, come sit at this table, Marie. You have paid no attention to Pierre tonight. Sure, Pierre. <laughs> if you'll buy me a drink. My throat's all dry from singing so much. Uh, but of course, Marie. Uh, Tom! Tom, bring your sister drinks. Sure, Pierre. Come on out. <laughs> you and your brother like it here in Dawson, yes? Oh, yes, we do. It's more exciting than it was at Whitehorse. Uh, hello, Sergeant Preston. Uh, hello, King, old fella. Hello, boys. Hi there, Bill. How about a room here tonight? Well, you're lucky, Sergeant. Uh, just got one left. Number three. So, keep it for me. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Come sit at our table. Well, thanks, Pierre. Glad to see you, Sergeant. Well, Marie, how are you? Haven't seen you since you left Whitehorse. What happened after I left? Did, did you ever find that murderer? No. 
Sorry to say I didn't, but I'm still looking. Uh, hello, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Tom? Here oh, fine, thanks. Uh, here's King. Hello, boy. Come here, Timmy, fella. He remembers you, Tom. Yeah. Well, I'll get your room ready, Sergeant. Uh, did he say number three? That's right. <laughs> you were lucky to get it. We're crowded tonight. Well, I'll uh, see you later. Uh, what bring you to Dawson, Sergeant? Oh, just a patrol. How do you and Tom like it here, Marie? Oh, much better. We... Hello, buddy. Look, that Timmy Burns. He's been hurt. Oh, what? What happened, Barney? Oh, Sergeant Preston. Preston, I was robbed on the trail about five miles back. Well, sit down here, Barney. You're hurt. Oh, just a bad crack on the head. What happened? Uh, coming around the bend, somebody slugged me over the head, took all my nuggets and dust. I finally come to, and I managed to get here. Take it easy. Get him a drink, Bill. Uh, we're sure. Did you get a look at the thief? Uh, not a good one, Sergeant. It was dark. Couldn't see him. I folded up when he hit me. Mm. <sighs> well, you'd better rest up tonight. We'll go out first thing in the morning and see if we can pick up his trail. Now, let me have a look at your head. Oh, how terrible. Don't you worry, Marie. You're safe in this place. I don't know about that. I'll be back in a minute, Pierre. You have not finished your drink. I'll wait here for you. I'll be right back. That's a bad gash in your head, Barney. You better lie down. Oh, that's nothing, Sergeant. I'm just a little weak, but... I'll be all right tomorrow. Uh, here's a drink. Oh, oh, thanks. This will sure help. Hey. <coughs> I can get a room here tonight, can't I, Bill? Gosh, I uh, just give the last room to Preston. Uh, but uh, you can bunk with me in the back room. Well, you need a good rest, Barney. You take my room and I'll bunk with Bill. Oh, gosh, that's fine of you, Sergeant. Sure that's all right? Sure. It's number three. As Marie entered her room at the back of the hotel, she stopped in the doorway, for a moment unable to distinguish between the two men who faced her. They were identical in every respect, even to the clothes they wore, the same black, sharp eyes, the same height and weight. Except for the more aggressive manner of George, she had never been able to tell one of her twin brothers from the other. If your sister can't tell you two apart, I'm sure nobody else will be able to. I guess we needn't worry. According to Tom here, we have plenty to worry about. He says Sergeant Preston has come. Yes, that's true. And to make things worse, the man you rubbed just came in. George, I thought you said you weren't he going He must to... have been tougher than I thought he was. I should have made sure. Well, what's Preston going to do, Marie? He's going out with him in the morning to try to pick up your trail, George. Now, I told you we should have left the country after that job in Whitehorse. Listen, Tom, I'm running this show. I do all the dirty work. Though, we I... do our share, hiding you and providing the alibis. If we could get rid of Preston, we'd be safe till we could get out of the country. Get rid of Preston? Are you crazy? George, that's impossible. He's staying here tonight, isn't he? I just fixed his room. Number three. I could do it quietly and get out through this room tonight before anyone knows about it. I could be out of the country before they start tracing me. And you could meet me later in San Francisco. You couldn't get near him with that dog of his always beside him. You could tell him you're nervous on account of the robbery, Marie. Tell him you'd like to have the dog for the night. Hmm. Might work. Oh, I don't like the idea. Killing a mountain. You never do like our ideas. We may be identical twins as far as looks go, but we don't think Now, alike. boys, don't fight. We have enough money now. If we can just get away this time. Tom can stay down in the bar where people can see him. They'll never suspect you, Marie. And you and Tom can leave this town as soon as you want to, openly. You'd better wait in Tom's room, George. It's closer to number three. If someone sees you come out of it, he'll think it's Tom. Right. But first, I'm going to the kitchen and get something to eat. I'm starved. Tom, you wait in your room till I get back. Okay. Be careful when you go through the bar. Sergeant Preston's Don't worry. There. I won't stop to talk to him. As George entered the bar, no one gave him more than a casual glance as his resemblance to Tom was so remarkable. He skirted the crowd carefully when he saw Sergeant Preston talking to Pierre at a table close by with his dog, King, lying beside him. Before he could get away, however, he heard Pierre. Uh, that Barney. <laughs> he must have head like coconut if blow like that does not crack it. Yes, he was lucky. I wonder what is keeping Marie. Oh, there is Tom. Tom, Tom, come here. Where is Marie? You'll be right back. Hey, King, what's the matter with you? That's Tom. <laughs> King, down, boy. Lie down here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> he is funny, dog. First he wag his tail at Tom. 
Now we growl at him. That's odd, Pierre. I've never seen King do a thing like that before. I'm glad Tom didn't notice it. Would have hurt his feelings. Sorry to keep you waiting so long, Pierre. I almost give you up, Marie. Now I will order three drinks. Uh, count me out, Pierre. I'm going to bed. Oh, uh, Sergeant Preston. Yes? I suppose you'll think I'm silly, but this robbery tonight, I'm afraid of every dark corner. I won't get a wink of sleep. Would you mind letting King sleep in my room tonight? Why, I'll be glad to, Marie, but we're leaving rather early tomorrow. Just rap on my door and I'll let him out. You see, being on the ground floor and I've lost the key to my door... Oh, naturally, you're nervous. What's your room number? I'll put him in there right now. It's number eight, at the back of the corridor. Oh, thank you so much. That's perfectly all right. Come on, fella. hotel corridor was quiet. Suddenly, the silent figure of George slipped up Tom's bedroom. He listened a moment at the door of room number three, then entered noiselessly. A knife gleamed in his hand as he silently approached the bedside of the sleeping man. <laughs> that takes care of you, Sergeant Preston. You won't trail me tomorrow. sat on the edge of her bed, tensely waiting for George's knock. King paced the floor in front of her, growling uneasily, as he sniffed at a parka that lay on a chair in the corner. He knew that scent and connected it with violence and death. Twice his master had told him to get this man, but twice the trail had been lost. But Marie stirred restlessly as the dog passed her. King, will you lie down? Lie down, you beast. You're driving me crazy. Quiet, King. Get back there and lie down. George, is it you? Let me in, quick. I did it with the knife. There wasn't a sound. We won't have to worry about it. Let go! Help! No, take him off! Hurry! Get away from me! Please, get off me! Hurry, help! Stop him! Get off me, you cry, you! Hurry! Save him! My friend, get off. that dog off! Let go! Let go! Let him up! Oh, it's Tom. My, my hand. What are you doing with that knife, Tom? What? You! Alive! Well, of course I'm alive. What's all the noise about? King attacked Tom. He came in here with a knife. Well, Tom's down in the bar. I just left him washing glasses. But what? What? This is Tom. Just a minute. There was a reason for King to growl at you tonight in the bar. He knew you weren't Tom. Also, he must have run across your scent before. That's Tom, I tell you. And now that knife has blood on it. And you were surprised when you saw me alive. Bill. Yeah? Look in the room I was supposed to be sleeping in, number three. Oh, sure. This was quite a clever setup, Maury. Hiding one twin brother who loved and murdered and letting the other one cover for him. Tom and I are innocent. Oh, no, you're not. You deliberately took King tonight. Sergeant Preston! Sergeant, he's been murdered. Stabbed with a knife. I was afraid of that. Bill, go down and bring Tom up here. If we just had sense enough to kill him. That's sir. enough out of you. You and your sister and twin brother are under arrest. Watch him, boy. <laughs> Yes, fella, we depended on our eyes, but you had his scent. So that's how he knew. As far as King was concerned, they weren't identical twins at all. Good work, fella. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.